Hello, everybody. It's me, Shannon LaBruyere. I am live and loving it tonight. Welcome to Sunday Night Live, where we are exploring the principles that allow us to thrive and change the change that we want, that we've looked forward to for years, the changes that come at us out of nowhere, big change, small change, all of it. All of the change that is part of our life has the opportunity to deplete us, to wear us down, to drain us. And I want you to know that even when change is hard, there is still opportunity there for it to feed our souls and we can thrive in change. So welcome. Thank you for joining me on this second to last second to last live Sunday night live, which I can hardly believe. Hey, Kelly, I'm glad to see you. And Philip, hello. Yeah, I'm just really, um, hi, Missy. I'm glad you're here. Oh, this is great. Thank you guys for chiming in. And if this is your first time, or maybe you've been watching Sunday night live for a while, but you've never said hi, now's your chance. Give StreamYard permission to use your Facebook profile and to use your picture, <laughs> excuse me, and say hi. Let us know who you are, where you're from. Uh, I'm just delighted to be able to spend a little bit of time with you guys tonight, and we are going to be exploring the Thrive Principle, hashtag trust the process. I'll bet if I went through the four or five year log of Sunday Night Live videos, and there are hundreds of them, I would discover that the most prominent thrive principle has been trust the process because life is about processes. Sometimes we're aware of the processes, sometimes we're not. Uh, but when it comes to dealing with change, understanding what processes work and using them to accomplish what we want them to accomplish is a powerful thing. That's what a process is. A process is a predictable way to allow anybody to get the same result. When you use the process, you get a predictable result. Not everything is predictable, especially not when you're talking about change, but there are some principles tried and true that constitute a process for us. And we're going to explore that tonight. We're going to talk about one word. And that was a special request from some of you who are Sunday Night Live alumni. And if you have a special request for something that you'd like me to talk about next Sunday, which will be our last live Sunday night live. Um, if you have something you want to explore, then by all means, let me know and we can talk about it. I'd love to do that with you. Tonight, though, we are going to be talking about one word and this idea of choosing a word. Many people choose it at the beginning of, of the year or at the end of the year so that they've got a a word moving forward, but I want you to know that you can choose a word at any point and start today. You can make today the start of your new year. Uh, we get addicted. I shouldn't say addicted. Humans love beginnings. They love New Year's Day. They love starting on a diet on a Monday, right? They, we just love that idea of the natural beginning. And so I encourage you, if you've been considering choosing a word, tonight's your night. Let tonight be day one. Let tonight be your beginning. Uh, and for those of you who've already chosen one, and this is going to be a fun conversation, we're going to explore maybe what you've discovered through your word. And I'll share a little bit with what about what I've discovered through mine. It's going to be a good time. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. The next thing is shout out to Thumb Roast Coffee. How do you pour love? Uh, I know that every time I pour myself a cup of coffee, I'm the only coffee drinker in my household. So I'm the one who makes my coffee. I'm the one who um, grinds it. I brew it. I pour it. And I sit down and drink it. And every time I do so, I feel special. It's a good time for me. It's something I look forward to. If you love coffee, go to thumbroastcoffee.com, 
buy yourself a bag of coffee and try it and see if I'm wrong. You will love it and you'll love getting a discount too. So make sure you use the coupon code THRIVE, T-H-R-I-V-E. You'll get 15% off of your order. Your coffee will come right to your mailbox and you can start pouring yourself love. Well, you know, as soon as you get it, even if it's not morning, trust me, it's good. <laughs> You'll want to jump right in. And with that, oh, hi, Corey, it's good to see you. With that, we begin. We are talking about one word. Some of you heard me talk about this earlier this year. And if so, um, be prepared, bring bring your thoughts and, and anything that new that you've observed uh, since the beginning of the year. If you've chosen a word, uh, share that with us. It's really exciting to hear what's popping up in people's lives because of their choice to choose a word. So let me give you a, a broad description of what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, once a year, I sit down and I choose one word. Uh, some people call it their my intent. Uh, I call it just my one word. I choose a word, not 10 words, just one word. And I choose that word with care. I choose it um, after several mornings of contemplation and prayer. I ask God to show me what word should I have? Um, what's my heart telling me that I want? Um, what would I like to see more of in my life? Where do I see that I'm not putting my values first? Where, is, where are they slipping? Maybe I want a word that, that connects with that. Uh, sometimes we don't even know where the word comes from and God just drops it in. Uh, the first word that I chose was the word with, which is such a strange word. <laughs> with does not seem like it's a very meaningful word, uh, but it dropped into my awareness. And as I sat with it, I realized that was the word that I wanted to, I pounded it out into a bracelet and I wore it to remind myself um, with. And as I explored that word with, what I realized was that I had been doing a lot of things for people and I wanted, I needed to make a shift to doing things with them. And what a difference, what a journey that was. That word stayed with me for two years and I needed it both years because looking at my life with that word allowed me to make some shifts to bring more meaning to the relationships that I had. It answered some questions that I had about uh, what was I doing wrong? Why was I not able to connect with people like I wanted? And as I sat with my word with, I realized that um, when I did things with people, I felt that connection. We were together working on a common goal. And when I did things for people, I was serving them and they appreciated that but they didn't feel like they were with me. We weren't together. And so me just picking that word and reflecting on it, and, and I'm going to talk more about what that process looks like, allowed me to make that shift to have more meaningful relationships, to be more um, present with the people that I was with, instead of just doing things for them and then sending them on their way allowing them to be part of that process of my process is beautiful. So let's talk about that one word. Some people I know have the word, have a word balance. I know one of um, you, I think Carol, your word is balance. Um, and she shared that with us before. Um, balance might be your word. I know somebody whose word was empower. I know somebody else whose word was love. Somebody else's word was salvation. Your word can be any word any word in the English language, but it's just one word. And the reason that it's just one word is important. So let me just invite you, if you're just popping on, say hi, let us know you're here. And if you've chosen a word, please drop that in the comment. Let us know what the word you've chosen to focus on for 12 months. What word have you chosen? 
Um, okay, so Philip's got his on here. He says, I chose the word positive. I have observed people reacting differently to me, he says, because I am positive. This has helped me so much. That's awesome, Philip, right? That there was a shift in you that has allowed people to respond to you differently. That's powerful. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else, please share. All right, so we're talking about trust the process. This idea of choosing a word really does set a process in motion. And the process, you guys, is centered around focus. So where my focus goes, my energy flows. You guys have heard me say that a million, well, not a million times, but a lot of times. Where our focus goes, our energy flows. When we pick a single word, we are intentionally eliminating thousands of words, right? Where they're not, they're not in our frame of view. They might be perfectly good words, but we're not, we're not keeping them. We've chosen to eliminate all of the others and pick one. And when our focus goes there, the energy that surrounds that word, the meaning of that word to us, the power of that word to help us automatically goes where our focus automatically grows, where our focus goes, our energy flows. Choosing a single word magnifies our experience through the lens of that word. And I'm going to say that again. When we choose one word, and we use that word as a, a prism through which to view our life, our experiences, our decisions, or like Philip says, our approach to others. When we use a single word to magnify, well, to look through like a magnifying glass at all the aspects of our life, it makes things clear to us that we might not have been clear on before. I'll use my example of the word with as my word. With seemed like such a strange word, but as I started to reflect, what do I do with people? Who do I allow myself to be with? Uh, when I'm with people, uh, am I listening? Am I talking? Am I being active? All these curious questions that seemed maybe small, but over the course of a year, I had such an opportunity to look at my life through that lens. Philip, you're talking about you looked through, you, you've been living your life through the word positive and you're seeing um, something different pop up and it's helped you. This happens over time. If you wake up one day and say, my positive, my day, my word for today is positive, you will see a small result from that, right? But when we choose to live with that word day in and day out over a period of time, that focus imbues it with a lot of power. So Corrine says, I use the random word tool you posted and it gave me story. Oh, that's a fun word. Um, Corey says, at first I thought that was odd, <laughs> right? Like, what is this weird word? But as I thought more, she says, I thought, well, the kids and I have a story we want to write. Yeah. And then I started thinking about it more, she said, in my everyday. And I've been realizing that in order to connect with people, it requires stories. Oh, my word. That's beautiful. She says, in order to influence people, it requires stories. An awareness about a simple word. And you're choosing to focus on that, Corey, and you're watching it transform the experience you have, not just by yourself, but with your family and with the people around you. It doesn't matter what word you use Corey's allowed a random word picker to do hers. Philip chose his intentionally. Doesn't matter how we get that word once we've decided on it and we start using it as the lens through which we view our lives, those things that we're viewing start to change. There is power in that. 
our word, that one word can help us to know what to say yes to. It can help us to know what to say no to. My word for this year is ministry. And it wasn't a word that I wanted. I, I was really tempted, Corey, to go to the random word picker because I, you know, felt God drop this into my awareness. And it's like, oh, ministry is is a, is my word. I'm sure that I can feel it. I can tell. I know I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't want it. I don't want it. I want a different word. I want a cooler word. I want a word that for me wasn't as laden with meaning because I had assigned a lot of meaning to the word ministry and not all of it was positive. So I'm just going to be transparent here. When we're talking about using one word to accelerate change in our lives, because it can, when we're talking about using one word to um, help fine tune the changes that happen in our life, our lives, that's what I've been experiencing through the word with, as it transformed my relationships with others and allowed me to connect more fully. But now with the word ministry, and I've, I've lived with that for the last five months. I chose it in uh, late December. Actually, it was a little bit before that, but I started actively really leaning into that word in late December and in January. And the word ministry has allowed me to as I get up in the morning, remind myself, I look at my bracelet and it says ministry on there. And I think, okay, I'm, I'm going to walk today out as if I'm a minister that has a ministry. I'm going to serve people. I want to help. Um, and what does that look like? If I'm walking in my ministry, and I'm not talking about ministry like I'm a licensed preacher. I'm talking about ministry in the sense that I am a servant. In England, uh, they have uh, ministers of the Minister of Education and the Minister of Health, and they've their governmental titles are called Minister of, and they have governmental agencies that are called ministries because they're there to help people and serve people. They're not there to make money. They're there to um, steward resources so that they do the most good. And that word has shifted the way I approach every day when I wake up and I think, okay, I have a ministry to do. I have to steward my resources in a way that allows them to do the most good. That to me was a mind-blowing shift in my understanding of what ministry was. I had assigned it so many definitions in my head that were things I didn't want to do. I didn't want to be a traveling evangelist and I didn't want to be a full-time pastor. And I didn't, you know, I had all this list of things I didn't want to do. But as I started to live with my word ministry, I started to realize, oh, this is what it means that I'm a steward of the things that God's placed in my life, my finances, my time, my ideas, my, uh, my purpose. I'm a steward of these things. And my job is to do them in the way that can do the most good, to use them in the way that can do the most good. When I go to bed at night, I think, what was my ministry like today? Just a few minutes. What was my ministry like today? What did it look like? How did it show up? When I make my decisions during the day, I can ask myself, is this consistent with what I see my ministry to be? Is this allowing me to steward my resources in the best, most effective way possible? If it is, great. The answer is yes. If it's not, then the answer has to be no. Has to be no. That word has allowed me to focus in on my activities so that they align with what I truly value. Um, Philip, I love your word positive. And I'm just picturing when you're making decisions during the day, what does positive look like? How does positive show up? What does it look like to be positive? What does it look like to be positive even when things are going wrong? What is positive? What's not positive? Oh my goodness, there's a year's worth of, of meditation and prayer and thought that goes around any word we choose. But that word allows us to focus 
in a very powerful way. It excludes a lot of distracting possibilities so that we are looking at our life through a prism that we've chosen. Um, and, and Corey, even though you allowed a random word chooser to assign you a word, you had to choose, you had to choose to accept it. So once we choose that word, what it means is, all right, I've chosen. My decision is here. My path is set. And when we focus, amazing things happen. I am picturing me outside on a summer day. And you might have tried this when you were a child. I played outside all day and it was hot, but it wasn't super hot. And the sun was out and I was just playing. I Nothing on me caught fire. Okay. It was, I was pretty safe out there. And then I got a hold of a magnifying glass and I took that magnifying glass and I started focusing it on some things and I focused it on some dry leaves and that sun, which was shining everywhere. But when I chose to focus it through that magnifying glass onto those leaves, the leaves started to burn. That's the effect of this word. It takes that power and energy, our life force, the, the, the thing that makes us who we are. It takes the, the, the God part of us, that breath of life that he put in us. It allows us to take that energy and focus it more fully through a, a magnifying glass that I believe he provides, whether we chose it randomly or he laid it on your heart in the fall and you fought against it for three months like I did. Um, once we allow that word and we choose it, we allow it to become that magnifying glass. It starts amazing fires. It brings great transformation. It's a fantastic thing. So as you think about maybe a word, what word would, what word would help you to accelerate the change that you want to see happen in your life? What change do you wish you had? What good thing do you wish you, you were doing? That is a great place to start to ask yourself about your word. What great, what positive change would I love to see happen in my life? And then take a word that represents that. Start today if you want. Take a word that represents that. Write it on a piece of paper. Put it on a sticky note. Get a Sharpie and write it on your hand, the palm of your hand. Stencil it onto a board. Cut it out of a magazine, letters, and put it up in a collage. Take your word. Display it in a way that you're going to see it. And then allow yourself to start viewing your actions through that word, you will see powerful, transformative, accelerated change. Guaranteed. Because where our focus goes, our energy flows. So as we're wrapping up, we've got a few minutes here. Anybody else want to share? Maybe you have a question about choosing a word, or maybe You'd like to share your story. Philip and Corey have shared theirs. Um, how about you? What's your story? What word have you chosen? Um, where have you seen your word show up in maybe surprising ways? I would love to hear it. By sharing our word with others, we hold ourselves accountable to it. Like, I chose this word. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine chose the word live. And she said, I just, I think it's kind of a weird word. I said, yeah, maybe, but it's your word. Doesn't matter how weird you own it, stand by it. What word are you viewing your life through? What word are you filtering your choices through? And 
Ooh, Missy says my word is more. So what, what does that even mean? I mean, wow, more, more what? That's the first question that I have, right? More what, Missy? More what? Um, what have you learned about it? Oh, so here she says, I now give myself permission to live more, do more, be more, allow more life, allow more love, she says. Mm. More. Beautiful. Thank you, Missy. Laura says, my word this year is clarity. It has helped me to pause in every situation to either listen more intently or Google further information. I love that, Laura, that your 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 word is <laughs> is is encouraging you to meditate, but it's also encouraging you to research, which is amazing. And we all have that tool. We have that tool, Google, that we can research where years ago that would have been so difficult. And now it's so easy. And what a beautiful thing. Ooh, Missy says this. This is an interesting thing. Giving myself permission to take up more space. Mm. That is very interesting. Take up more space. For those of you who maybe aren't familiar with the word, can you see just in some of the things that people are sharing, can you see how just one word can bring so many facets of your life to light? And then our curiosity takes hold, right? We wonder, oh, what's that about? What does it mean to give myself permission to take up more space? I have a feeling, Missy, that you're not talking about gaining 40 or 50 pounds. That's probably not the kind of space you're talking about, right? Interesting. I want to encourage you, whoever you are, to find a way to focus your energy so that you can see the fire start, so that you can see the excitement burst into being. The power of focus is so motivating when it comes to change. There are so many changes in our lives that we want, but they require us to be consistent and often it's a slow go. But when we choose a word, one word that I believe God gives us to start viewing any change in our life through that word, uh, it accelerates our motivation. It accelerates our excitement uh, because we start seeing things differently. Uh, Missy says, not make myself small. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one for many people. You guys are amazing. Thank you for sharing yourselves here so consistently on Sunday Night Live. Thank you for caring enough about making an impact to consider things like choosing a word, the impact, the power that you focus into that area of your life, whatever area it may be, stories, Corey, the stories of your children, the stories of yourself, the stories you tell yourself, the stories other people tell you, um, whatever word it is that you've chosen, you allowing that to focus and make a difference changes everything around you for the better. Missy said, I needed the reminder to filter decisions through my word to say no to what doesn't align. Thank you. Yeah, your word helps you to know whether to say yes or no. Your word helps you to know, am I, if, by saying no to this, is it allowing more into my life? Is it, or am I keeping myself small? If I say yes, does that mean that I'm allowing more? It's beautiful. I love the word story. That's a random one that I, um, I'm just going to drop that in there. God, if you want to drop that into my life, I'll take that one for, for 2024. <laughs> Let me think about it. Um, but every word, every word is assigned meaning 
by us. We decide what that means to us. Laura, I think that's so cool that you Google to investigate more as you're learning about clarity and looking for clarity about things. Um, we're the ones who assign meaning to words and we're the ones who get to shift it or expand it. Uh, so as I've gone through the year looking at my word ministry, what I'm discovering is, is that it means so much more than what I used to think it did. It, I see ministry more in my life than I ever have before. I'm humbled by the opportunities I have to be a minister. All of these things, they weren't happening to me a year ago. Uh, that wasn't my focus. But because I've chosen to focus, I'm becoming more. <laughs> That's Missy's word, but I'm stealing it for a minute. I'm becoming more. Allow yourself to focus. Focus your energy on a word. Use it to focus your energy. View what you do, the decisions you make, the reflections at the end of the day through the prism of that word, through the magnifier of that word. Examine how it's at work in your life. What process has your word begun in your life? What actions do you do differently? What thoughts do you think differently, right, Philip? The thoughts that we think differently then become actions that cause different outcomes and impact the people around us differently. And that ripple effect um, can be very, very significant. There's no, <laughs> to me, there's no better way to focus my power than to choose a word that uh, represents something positive that I want to see happen in my life or that I, I want to uh, think about differently in my life. Uh, there's no better way than to pick a word and then start focusing on that, using that as the prism through which we view everything else, and then watching how our behavior changes because of the thoughts we're thinking. With that, I bid you farewell for tonight. Next Sunday is uh, going to be here in the United States, Memorial Day weekend. I will be here. Um, it will be our last live Sunday night live. Uh, I'm not sure what the future holds, but I do know that I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you one last time here on a Sunday night. I cannot wait. If you want to talk about something special, feel free to message me or drop it in the comments, um, put it in the group on the Facebook page. I'll find it, right? <laughs> you know how to find me. Uh, put it out there. I'd love to talk about it. And be sure to share this with anybody that you think might benefit from knowing the power of being able to focus our effort using the tool of choosing a word. With that, I bless you all. Good night.